You're blind and you don't even know it. Sorry, not to alarm you, but every human suffers from inattentional blindness. It's a phenomenon where, as humans, we may look at something every day, every hour, or even every minute, but still not see it. When you watch TV, you're also staring at the pictures on your wall for hours and hours, and yet, you don't even think of it. The same goes for a single word that we probably see every day, but we never think twice about. Unleaded. Unleaded gasoline is pretty commonplace for cars today. Owning a 1931 Ford, I often get asked, do you have to add lead? And the answer is no. But 1980s cars say unleaded only. What was leaded gasoline? And why was it so short-lived? According to the United States Department of Energy, Edwin Drake dug the first crude oil well in Pennsylvania in 1859, using it to produce kerosene to provide light for his home. Gasoline was produced in the process of distillation, but was thrown away because it was deemed useless. 33 years later, the automobile started to become popular, and gasoline was recognized as a cheap fuel. By 1920, around 9 million cars were using gasoline regularly, and from there, we all know what happens. But why did they start adding lead? The 1900s was full of innovation. In the 20s, the automobile was immensely popular, and hundreds of car makers were trying to improve performance, fuel economy, and smoothness of their engines. Some engineers began to experiment with tetrathylid, aka lead. When added to gasoline, it acted as an octane booster, allowing for higher compression engines, more efficient burns, and cleaner valves and seals. It was an anti-knock agent and was heavily tested by Thomas Midley at General Motors. Midley, what do I know that name from? Oh yeah, he also helped design R12 and Freon. This single man has done more damage to the environment than all the Hummer H2s put together. But back to the story. At the time, it was a cheap and effective way of adding performance to an engine, so stations started offering it for vehicles that required it. Leaded gas was used for a few decades, being a popular fuel in the 1960s and 70s. Lead was a known poison, but researchers at the time said that small amounts that you might breathe in from a car would be insignificant and have no major effect on your well-being. This ended up being wildly false. On a typical day last month, U.S. motorists used 122 million gallons of leaded gasoline. What comes from leaded exhaust is a polluted atmosphere and damage to children, like brain damage, learning disabilities. Estimates? 300,000 children have levels of lead in their systems that are considered dangerous. Children raised during the height of leaded gasoline usage were found to have 5 micrograms of lead in their blood, of which 3.5 micrograms is considered to be dangerously high. This caused millions of cases of lead poisoning, and one NBC article states that people regularly exposed to leaded auto gas had 6 to 7 fewer IQ points due to their exposure. Factoring in that at the time, we also knew nothing about mercury poisoning or aerosols, it's no wonder the older generation has severe physical and mental health issues. But by the 1980s, most car makers had made the switch to unleaded only, which is why so many cars from that era have it labeled on anything associated with the gas. This switch also led to the development of different octane ratings, we are familiar with the three levels of fuel today, 87, 89, and 93 octane, or 85 octane if you live in a high altitude location, and 91 octane if you live near a Dollar General convenience store. So when did we outlaw leaded gas in the United States? 1996. Yep, not even 30 years ago. Even more crazy, leaded gas wasn't banned worldwide for automobiles until August of 2021. Now, leaded gas is actually still in production in very, very limited quantities. It has a use in aviation, but this is a car channel, so we won't worry about that. Ethanol was added to most gas in 2005, offering an octane booster that is safer than lead. 
Or at least that's what they're telling us now. Who knows what they're going to say in 20 years. Some gas stations offer ethanol free fuel, but again are found in rural areas and mostly used for farming equipment or watercrafts if you live near a body of water. So now, if you notice unleaded the next time you fill up, you'll know that at least you're not sucking on a thousand school pencils the next time a car drives past you. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of my video essay series. I am so excited to be doing more of these here in 2023. I release a new video essay every month on the 20th. So the 20th of each month, you guys will be getting a new video essay. If you have a topic you would like me to talk about, please leave it in the comment section down below. You can also buy my sticker that 80s cars were better. I personally believe that down in the description below as well. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching.